welcome back to the rest of the story. Well, I promised you guys I'd give you a rundown through the bin. This is where we currently stand as far as corn harvest and drying it all down. I went through, I shut the stirator off because, well, I lie. I didn't shut it off off, I just pulled all the plugs on motors. Um, the stirator, as I've said in the past, is a lot more dependable than the stirator in the other, other bin. Uh, center you guys a little bit here. That's better. Uh, this bin is a lot more dependable, or the stirator, well, bin too, is a lot more dependable than the one that had failed on us. Granted, this one isn't 40 years old. The stirator is built so much heavier than the other bin also. Uh, granted, the beam we have here, I think really contributes to that. Also, as far as the rail goes, um, it really can't jump off as long as this is set properly. And I apologize if it's kind of dark in here. I didn't bring my light, but it runs around the bin on this rail. It goes all the way around the bin. So that's what I mean when I said the motor wasn't running and taking the stereo around the bin is because the wire, it's a little bitty control wire coming out of that box into the main one on the other end. That was not telling this motor to run. And all it would do, it was sit and all the augers would run, but it would not run around the bin and agitate the corn. What this does, what it is accomplishing by going around the bin, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a little bit of a cold for my, my nephew, I'm pretty certain. Um, what we're doing here is that it's mixing the grain. It's stirring up the corn in the bin because if you guys can hear it, the dryer, the fan is running and it's blowing 100 degree weather air, 100 degree weather, wow. It's blowing hot air, about 100 degrees, up through the corn. And what it's doing is it dries the corn on the bottom of the bin faster than the corn on top. So what the stirator accomplishes is that it's pulling up that dry corn from the bottom and it's allowing this corn with a little bit more moisture in it to sink down through and you get an even moisture or an even dry down of the corn. These things are a hassle, but to be completely fair, although I have no experience in standing dryers, I have heard that they have their own problems as well so I mean it's whatever issues or whatever route to dry your grain you're willing to put up with is the route to go now I'm not saying we won't ever do a standing dryer and be honest with you I think I would rather go that route but this stirator is the only one we have uh, we did not put one in the other 20,000 bushel bin and this one is getting to the point where it's a lot it's been a lot more dependable as opposed to the first year. Uh, we had some bugs in the system and it really wasn't anything we did. It was just, it was just sent to us improperly put together. So we're going through, those are where the, a lot of the problems I'm having right now. Um, the only problem I had this spring was the wire that I got pulled out of the, out of the control box and that was literally a five minute fix. It's not the end of the world. I mean, if it was something that took us two, three days to, to fix, I'd be doing a lot more swearing. So, overall, uh, the three auger design seems all right. I've never had one like this. The other one has just two augers that are spaced. Like in the other bin, the, there's an auger here, and then there's an auger right here, and there's just two augers. and they do a lot more work granted the other bin isn't near as as uh, big as this one but these are spaced out a little bit more um, simple little attachment on these that i really like um, we could have added it to the other stirator also um, are these little pieces of metal that when the corn does start to get up towards these they do kind of help spread the corn out throughout the bin Oh, and the stuff is getting dry because uh, I'm sinking in. 
That's a good indicator as to whether or not you got wet corn or dry corn. Wet corn, depending on how wet it is, you can practically walk right across it. And you can see I'm pretty well sinking down in it. I'm green. Right now, um, as far as being trapped or suffocated in the bin, um, is not a is not an issue. It's not a concern because we have not pulled any grain out of the bin. Uh, people have been worried. Granted, this is from last year. People were worried about us going into the bin and getting trapped in the corn. Um, as we stand right now, we are. I am perfectly safe. Uh, when it starts getting dangerous and when we will not be going into the bin is when you start pulling grain out of the bin. Uh, flowing grain kills. It does not take very long to end you. And any of my young viewers that aren't familiar with grain, don't ever play in it. Just, just don't. I'm not much of a role model, but that's one thing that I can definitely say. Don't, don't ever play in, in grain. Um, what happens is, a lot of the instances that you hear is that when guys leave these sit over the winter, um, sometimes, I've never really had it our, happen ourselves, so I don't really have a, a personal experience, but what I've heard is that what happens is the top layer of the grain, the corn, uh, will crust. It'll get a, a thin crust on it, well, six, eight inches, or whatever it is, and you could have pulled out two or three semi loads of grain out of here and you couldn't tell. And then what happens is, and this is what gets a lot of farmers, is that they go in and try to break it up. And what happens is, is that that crust will break and the farmer will fall down in it. And what happens is, is that when that crust breaks, the farmer is down in the cone because that's what it makes when you're pulling grain out. It, makes a cone down in the center and then all this extra grain that got built up around the outside edges falls down on you and it kills you and it suffocates you and it does not take very long to do that um, farm safety <laughs> if you can take farm safety course if they're still doing it go ahead and do it because that is one thing that they definitely uh, made certain that we were all aware of about how how dangerous corn is, how dangerous grain bins are, um, even wagons, how dangerous um, grain wagons are. In my uh, other video where you saw the grain flowing out of the wagon, um, same instance, that flowing grain when it's going down out towards the unloading door, um, that flowing grain, um, you can stick your, I could stick my leg in up to my knee and you can feel the pressure on your leg. Um, not trying to come across as a safety advocate or anything, but just know what you're doing. Um, if you're unsure about stuff like that, if you're un if you're not familiar with where you're at or what you're doing, just stay away. Wait until somebody is there that knows a little bit more than you about what's going on or what you're doing. Um, I don't climb in the grain grain wagons anymore. I mean. Typically when we did, it was when we were doing oats, and oats needed to be pushed out of the wagon. But we were also talking about 200 bushel wagons, and I'm, I was a middle schooler, high schooler, and me standing at the bottom of those wagons, my head was clearly, practically out of the wagon. So you wouldn't catch me doing that with that 500 bushel wagon, because that would, that would uh, really up the dangerous factor. So anybody have any questions about the bin uh, let me know uh, we have a long harvest ahead of us we're shut down for the rest of this week from the looks of it and according to the weather forecast we have maybe four days of sunshine coming and if that's the case maybe the first day or two of maybe running corn out and then we have to really push hard on trying to get some soybeans out because soybeans as everybody knows i hate them um, I don't know too many farmers that are really crazy about them. Um, it's not that I don't like the plants or anything like that. I mean, I like the checks and everything from them. Um, but they're a pain in the butt to try to get harvested because they are really particular. So right moisture, right weather, right conditions. Um, the spreader, too. I was having some issues with that. I um, hope I'm not blinding you guys. Um, it has an electric motor on the inside of the cone 
and it drops down into the spinner and that spinner will spread this corn out fairly even. I'm not totally press, impressed with it yet. I did have a problem with it. Uh, just bear with me here. On the bottom of that cone, it had a little bit of a dent in it. I'm not sure where the dent came from, but it was actually pressed inwards. And what happened is, is that it was pushing grain to that side and that side, and it was filling the bin a little bit more unevenly. So what happened is, um, we had a little bit more of a, a pile of corn over there and over here. And that's why the stirrator is really nice in that. It does a great job of leveling out the bin. You can see it's pretty much level the whole way around it. And um, this cone here, um, what's gonna happen is these augers are gonna move in and out on that, on that beam. I mean, that inside auger will be right down the center. And last night when I checked this, it actually had corn built up to a cone in the middle where it was hitting the top of that auger. So I mean, it's doing its job. It's doing its job really well. So, <clears throat> all right, Ryan's out there looking for me, so I better get going. You guys are watching the rest of the story. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Take care, take it easy, keep in touch. I'll talk to you guys uh, next time, maybe tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow. So.